Good morning, my friends. It's terrific to see all of you today. Uh, for those of you who may be visiting with us this morning or who are new to the parish, my name is Father Kevin Huber. I'm the pastor. And with our deacon, Mike Green, and the entire parish community, we're happy to have you with us. So I want to wish all of you moms a very, very blessed and very joyful day today. Despite the weather, the, uh, the, the light of our children continues to shine on us. So um, a very, very blessed day to you. Just one quick thing. Um, last week, I talked to you about the, uh, about the Catholic Services Appeal and about our, um, our participation in the mission of the Diocese of Gary and the mission of the church when we are willing to contribute to the Catholic Services Appeal. So if you haven't had a chance to, um, to make a pledge or if, you, uh, if you'd like to make a pledge today, you can find the pledge cards in the, uh, in the pew rack right here. Um, you can fill them out and put them in the, um, uh, in the collection basket, or you can mail it to the office, or you can bring it to the office, or you can just mail it right to the diocese, whatever you want to do to make it easier for you. Um, but please know I'm very, very grateful for your assistance in that, in sharing in the mission of the diocese and of the church. So one of the things that, or one of the constant uh, slogans that Bishop McClory has uh, assumed these last number of months is the notion of, uh, of uh, surviving or thriving in the midst of the COVID season. And this has been very, very prominent for him. And, uh, and really what he wants us to be thinking about is like, are we just going to get through this COVID thing? Or are we really going to rise above it and come out at the, on the other side um, just ready to, ready to go, ready to continue the mission of the Lord. And so I, I t I've been thinking a lot about uh, his, uh, his thought about surviving or thriving. And all of a sudden in this reading today that we hear from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, we begin to see how exactly we can move above survival and we can really begin to thrive uh, as we, as we uh, enter into the other side of COVID-19. So I just want to share some thoughts with you about that. This past week, as I've been thinking about and preparing for Mother's Day, I have been uh, continuing to go back to March 19, 2014. It was actually the day that my mother passed, uh, that she passed away and, and, and made her entrance into eternal life. And I remember that at 7.30 on March the 19th, I, was, uh, I, got a, I received a phone call from my sister-in-law who told me that my, my mom had passed at 6.40. And so I immediately got into my car and I drove to the, uh, to the Porter Regional Hospital. And by the time I arrived there, my entire family was there. My dad was, was in this uh, little emergency uh, room cubicle. My brothers were there, my sister's-in-law, my nephews, my niece were there. We were all there. And we were, um, we were saying our goodbyes in our own particular way to my mom. And there was this unspoken sadness and these unspoken questions. Because we were looking at her, we thought, this is our matriarch. This is the one who holds the family together. She's the one who has always been so strong and has been so ferocious in her love for us. What we, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen to our family? Where are we going to go? How are we going to keep it all together? How are we going to come out on the other side of this? How are, we going, how are we going to really deal with this? And there was this tremendous sense of, of, of almost um, this tremendous sense of, of, of not just of sadness, but also wonderment, like how are we going to move through it? There are experiences that we all have that completely change the trajectory of our lives. And sometimes they even completely derail us. And sometimes it's the, uh, the untimely death of a, of a parent or a, or a friend or a child or your spouse. And sometimes it is re it's a relocation. It can be unemployment. It can be declining health. It can be all of a sudden a, just tra a tragedy in your, in your family or, or in your life, and then all of a sudden you're just wondering to yourself, how are we going to get to the other side? How am I going to, wh what's it going to look like on the other side? How am I going to survive, much less thrive? And that's why this reading today is really, really important to us. 
Because Jesus is, um, is, is with his disciples at the Last Supper. And actually, this reading today is a continuation of what we heard last Sunday. And here's Jesus with his disciples. And we don't hear it today, but in the 14th chapter, Jesus drops a bomb on his disciples. He says to them, I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. And all his disciples hear is, you're, gonna, you're going away. You're not going to be here with us anymore. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What's our life going to look like? Because you're not going to be here anymore. You're going away. That's all they heard. And that's why we have to keep in mind two very critical lessons that Jesus communicates to his disciples. We heard the first one last weekend. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And what he was telling his disciples is, you are intimately and uh, inextricably connected to me. You're not going anywhere and I'm not going anywhere. Just hang on. And the second lesson that we hear is, is what we heard today. When he said, love one another as I have loved you. He's not offering this as a proposal. He's not offering this lesson as a suggestion. Notice the wording, love one another as I have loved you. It's a command. Because Jesus knows that that's what it's going to take for us, not just to survive, but really to thrive. That we realize that we have been grafted on to the body of Christ, and we need to love one another. And that's the key. My friends, all of this leads us to a very, very important way of life. That you and I, when we dare to see ourselves as people who are able to, or, or as we dare to see ourselves as those who are grafted onto the body of Christ, if we dare to see ourselves as really intimately connected with our Lord, and then we begin to love one another, that's when things begin to change. That's when we're able to develop and create an environment of hope, an environment of peace, an environment of opportunity. No matter whatever happens, no matter what comes along, as long as you and I know our identity and as long as we continue to follow that command of our Lord, we're going to have exactly what we need to come out of the other side way better than we ever thought we would, way better than we even are right now. It's really interesting when we hear the words love one another, um, Pope Francis in his recent book, Let Us Dream, he refers to that as uh, fraternity. In other words, we need to look at the needs of others. Don't focus on ourselves. Don't focus on our well-being. Don't worry about what we have to get done. But rather, look at the people around you, notice what their needs are, and at that point, you'll begin to do what Jesus actually has told us to do, which is to love one another. And that's where things really begin to change. That's where things begin to happen, not just in our lives, but also in the lives of others. It's been seven years since my mom passed, and I'll be honest with you and tell you that my family still very, very much feels the absence of my mom, especially at, on days like today, on Mother's Day, on days like her birthday, which is November the 14th, at Christmas and Easter. We feel her absence a lot. But what we've come to realize is that we need to follow her example. She was very, very much invested in us, not necessarily what was going on with her, and we began to do that with one another. We begin to, we begun to, or we, we continue to uh, see the needs of our, um, of, of, uh, of my family, and we're addressing those. And today's call is really so much bigger than that. Today's call is not just to look to your family, but also to look to your friends, to look to your coworkers, to look to your community. See the needs then love one another. 
And that is, my friends, how we're going not just to survive, but more importantly, we'll thrive.